What's up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ayushi and today we're going to be doing a special video because I'm going to be instructing you guys to the best of my ability of weapon grinding. Armor grinding is pretty much going to end up being the same thing, but basically what grinding is in this game is leveling up your gear. So it's going to end up making it more powerful, more potent. Uh, you can do it to end up gaining special abilities on your gear and stuff like that as well. Uh, while we're chilling here in the hub area, all you gotta do is just turn directly around and then you take this elevator to the shop area and the item grinder is gonna be right over here at the item lab there's a couple things that we need to talk about before we just get into the weapon grinding in general though uh, because the first step most notably with a lot of the gear is identifying it and you're gonna do it at the tecker right here so when you're identifying a piece of gear for example like this right here uh, it, you can very easily tell what weapon type you're trying to identify and what damage it's going to end up doing. So there's three different forms of damage in this game. Uh, there's going to end up being this, which is S attack or melee attack. Uh, the blue one, which is R attack or ranged attack. That's for guns and stuff. And then T attack or tech attack uh, is going to end up being basically your magic damage for any of the spells and stabs and stuff like that, right? So immediately we can already tell that this item is going to end up having melee melee attack which means that it's going to end up being a melee weapon on top of that though you can literally see the small little icon right here that shows a spear tells me that this is what this weapon's gonna be you can literally hover over it and it says it's gonna be a partisan which is the spear weapon so once you end up familiarizing yourself with all of those icons you'll know which items to actually pick up and bother with while you're out on your adventures and stuff like that now, on top of all of that, uh, you can see that all the area stats are random because we don't know how powerful this is going to be, but I have a pretty good idea that this would only end up being one red star or something like that. Uh, if you know that you've got something good, like maybe you got something from a really powerful enemy or something from super hard difficulty, you might want to actually bother going for the high grade identification, which is literally going to end up being a higher grade of identification it's going to cost you a lot more and it's going to end up making the item a lot more powerful and giving it a lot more stat value let me actually just show you as a quick example because i think i have some in my bank uh, of what each of these item types will end up looking like for you guys. Yeah, so right here, we've got a Last Survivor NT uh, plus 20. I got this weapon to plus 20, uh, which I want to give you guys a heads up, by the way. I was able to consistently farm this item, this one sword, uh, from the hard mode forest expedition. So, so long as you can end up handling that, you gotta be maybe around level 27 or something just so that you can end up handling it. Uh, if you can end up getting through and beating that boss, it seems to drop a hard mode weapon for pretty much every class in the game. And it seems to be consistently the same drop over and over, which is really good because you end up getting a, a more bang for your buck when you end up combining the same same item type uh, to actually leveling them up in the grinder but we'll talk about that in a minute we're still talking about that identification so this was a sword that had normal identification and this was a sword that had high identification you can immediately see the damage difference of 608 to 623 and then this weapon still has 10 more levels to go before it catches up to the other one on top of that you can see the passive abilities uh, i only have two of them on my level 20 weapon whereas i have like six seven i think that's seven of them yeah it shows right here actually that's what this icon is we have seven different passive abilities on this just because it ended up doing a high identification so keep that in mind because it's really really important to end up finding a good enough piece of gear that you actually bother leveling it you're not going to need to grind any gear for normal mode okay you'll barely have to grind any of your gear for hard mode, but I'd recommend that you use that hard mode gear uh, from the forest expedition just because it's consistent and you can end up actually leveling it up pretty easily and pretty cheaply. All right, so let's get into the bulk of it, which is the item grinding itself. This is not as complex as the game pretends that it is, but at the same time, it can end up being pretty confusing if you don't know what's what. So let's just take the Zax, for example, as the weapon that we're intending to upgrade, right? we can start literally pouring these items into the Zax to end up making it more and more powerful. And the amount of XP that you get uh, in order to actually level up the said item of your choosing is going to be dependent on the rarity of the weapons that are being consumed because all these items are going to be deleted. So keep that in mind, but on top of it, the weapon type itself. So while we're getting a much higher value for some of these other items, uh, the fact is that if we end up using 
using something that is a higher value, you can see right here, this uh, weapon right here isn't necessarily the same weapon type. It's not a sword. Uh, it's actually a weapon that isn't even for our class. It's for the fighter class. But it's giving a lot more XP just because the item itself is that much more powerful and capable than any of the other items. Uh, and if we would continue to the next screen, for just as a quick example, you can see uh, these are the various other stat values to keep in mind. So the grind value is going to be the items uh, like actual level. So it's going to actually go to plus 10 and then a maxed out bar. That's because there's going to be intervals that you'll get to with grinding gear where the gear is going to stop and then you're going to have to pour in some more expensive resources to force it past that level, which we'll talk about that in a moment because I want to just mention the stat increase you can see with the S attack, which is our melee attack. That's just going to keep increasing as we pour more items into it. Uh, or ranged attack or tech attack depending on the weapon and then the attribute rate which is basically the element is going to increase so long as you're putting the same category of item into it so for example uh, the axe is actually going to end up being come on menu geez the axe is going to end up doing light damage as you can see uh, right here so if I select this and uh okay bad example let's take this sword that has uh 24 fire damage right if i end up taking this partisan which is 23 fire damage and try to combine these items into each other you can see that the attribute rate actually isn't going up no stats are going up just because the level of it isn't going up but the attribute rate is not going to end up changing because this is actually a completely different category of item and it doesn't matter about the level, you can see that I've poured a couple other items into it to make it actually go up to uh, plus seven, but the attribute rate is still not changing. And that's because we're selecting items that aren't the same category. And by category, I literally mean we would have to pour another sword into it in order to end up increasing the element. So if we take the Zax, for example, which is actually doing light damage again, by the way, it's the same category of weapon, so it doesn't matter what the attribute is. The element is going to end up increasing on the sword that we picked because we're putting another sword into it, which, uh, as you saw, is going up just by one value, so 25, uh, 24 to 25. Uh, but if we end up taking a, another weapon that has the same attribute value to it, so it's the a fire weapon into a fire weapon, you can see that it's instantly going to give it like a whole lot more. So it pays to end up having the same class of weapon and the same element if you want to end up increasing that a lot more uh, on top of the fact that if you have a duplicate it's going to end up increasing it uh, pretty much tenfold but that doesn't really matter too too much because the limit as far as I can tell seems to be 50 and then you have to pour other items uh, into it including some special items in order to end up increasing it past that because I think 60 is the uh, top tier that you can end up doing for uh, an elemental damage uh, I'm not exactly sure but I want to show you guys one last thing right here so you can see that if we end up taking the Zax and putting it into this while the attribute rate is going up uh, you can see that the S attack is also going up the weapon itself is going to end up going to a plus 7 value and the upgrade limit is going to remain at 30 now you might have noticed when we actually had the other sword equipped so let's put this other last survivor in so this is two of the exact same weapon that we're pouring into one another uh, you can see that because these swords are so similar it's actually increasing the upgrade limit of the item itself so what that means is that we could potentially level this item past level 30 and get it to a value of plus 31 the more of this same type that we end up pouring into it would end up increasing that value i don't know whether or not you can increase it to 35 or uh, plus 40 i know that there is a limitation on it by doing this method but i'm not i'm not 100 sure on it and even though i would like to say that it's just from putting duplicates of the same weapon in it seems like the game recognizes a very specific type. So this one, I think, even though it's considered uh, to be a photon sword, uh, it still considers itself to be a different category than these last survivors, which are quite literally going to end up being a sword. The only reason I say that is because through my testing with some of the gear that I have, I've actually been able to put items uh, that are similar into an item that is completely different and still end up increasing that upgrade limit. I don't know entirely, okay? But anyways, let's move on. So 
with all of that as an understanding and as a standard just point here, uh, you end up slowly leveling up the gear. Uh, you can end up changing the upgrade support slot. So this will be items that you can end up finding in the stores and just out in the world as rare drops and stuff, which I'll show you as an example in a moment um, where you can end up buying them. But uh, this will end up increasing the odds of success because as you level these items later, they're going to end up having much, much riskier like chances of actually succeeding. And I've heard, uh, although I haven't tested it myself, I've heard that items can actually de-level now, I know that in the olden times, back when I played this game in 2012, an item could actually break and then you would have to go through a process to repair it. As far as I've heard from more recent players, that has actually been removed. But I think that items can not only still fail to level, but I think they can still de-level. Somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about that. But anyways, uh, a tribute change, a tribute is going to be your element. So you literally would use an item to change the elemental damage to something else, which, okay, cool. And then element up is going to be, like I said, I think used uh, to increase that cap of the elemental damage. I don't know if the elemental damage, like if the rooftop of it is 60, it's just the highest elemental value that I've seen on weapons, but it's not like I'm at the 100% end game or anything, right? So maybe you could just keep increasing that to a much higher state. I don't know. Anyways, as you end up leveling that piece of gear, it's going to end up uh, having a success rate and going to level up. Uh, at levels 10, 20, and 30, though, you're going to have to pump in a bunch of extra resources in order to upgrade it beyond that point. So let me actually see. Okay, I don't have them right now. Let me let me hop over to my bank and grab myself uh, my plus 10 and my plus 20 sword. So using these as examples, I can't level this past plus 10 until I end up unlocking its potential. So the potential ability of a weapon is going to end up changing based on whatever weapon you're using. This one, for example, is going to give me obstinate spirit level one, which grants a chance to survive a lethal attack with one HP. That's a pretty cool passive if I do say so. But in order to end up actually unlocking that ability, we're going to have to spend and photon spheres. These are going to end up being rarer drops. You don't really find them too, too often. There is a shop where you can kind of exchange for them, but it's very, very pricey. And generally speaking, these items are not going to be like super duper common, at least in my stages of the game where I'm kind of in hard mode, just barely going to a harder difficulty. Uh, I'd recommend that you be very careful with which items you decide to upgrade. But at the same time, it shouldn't matter too, too much because as soon as you start getting to much higher tiers of items they're actually going to cost different resources in order to upgrade so most of these items as we're upgrading them you've seen these lower tiered items these are going to cost grinders uh, photon crystals and spheres and junk uh, all these items that are showing up uh, in your last inventory slot uh, right over here. Well, not your last inventory. I guess it's your second last, but grinder, photon, drop, crystals, synthesizer, all these things, uh, including your uh, money in the game, is going to end up working towards leveling up the weapons and grinding them up. It just takes these resources every time you level them, right? Uh, whereas the Lamba grinder, as an example, is going to be the replacement of the regular grinder for higher tiered gear so higher tiered gear is going to cost a higher tier of grinder which you can end up getting for rare drops uh you can end up buying out of a couple shops as well which uh, again i'll show you guys that in a moment because i just wanted to give you a quick example and let you know that once we end up unlocking the potential which i don't want to waste my uh photon spheres on this we could then end up leveling this weapon beyond level 10. So then we could get all the way up to level 20, as you can see right here. And then once the item is at level 20, it's gonna to come to the exact same thing. What it's going to do is going to end up increasing the percentage of whatever the passive ability is. So you can see we already have Obstinate Spirit. Now we would be gaining Obstinate Spirit level two. And in order to do that, it's gonna cost, you guessed it, even more Photon Spears, or in the case of another weapon, uh, more of the higher tiered resource right and then once doing that we could level this up to level 30 so on and so forth to whatever the maximum is i'm assuming the max is uh, again it's got to be either 35 or 40 but i'm not entirely sure and it doesn't really matter too too much then there's going to be adding abilities so the abilities are going to refer to these passive buffs that you'll end up getting which you can always check what they do on page three of the item so you can see that stamina three gives us 50 hp ember and brace adds 90 to xp when you upgrade a new 
type weapon so that's why whenever i'm putting the zax into stuff uh, it was increasing much more xp than just the last survivor and we'll talk about old type weapons and new type weapons in a little bit because that's a little further down our list right but let's say for example we take this sword that's got power one stamina three and we try to combine it with this other item that has let's see if we can end up finding uh, something that has power one and stamina two whatever prime example let's just do it because i don't care i'm just trying to use these as an example so now that we've had two power ones put into this weapon we can actually combine it to power two right so it's quite literally you put one uh, two level one of an item you can end up getting it to power two uh, we'll just use that as an example and then if we had two items that had power two and combined those together we would have a chance of getting power three i don't know how high these values can end up going to but i'm just using those as an example right and you can also see that certain items like they'll have a limitation on how many abilities you can end up having on them on top of that the percentage of success so we could just go for power one and that's going to be 100 percent value or we can risk it for a power two upgrade which is going to end up being at a 66 percent this is going to end up being the final percentage right here whereas this is just kind of the it's like the starting point percentage whereas this is taking a couple more things into account like the weapon that you're using in junk and how powerful it is so we could go for stamina three, uh, stamina three right here and then if we decide to risk it for the extra slot let's say we want blow resistance here then suddenly the percentage decreases on all stat values so it's very very risky but then you end up getting an extra stat you know an extra ability so do you want to end up risking it that's kind of the whole bread and butter of adding uh, other abilities now the thing is the more items that we decide to combine with uh you know with the sword for example is going to end up increasing our odds so you can see power two is now actually at a 92 percent value of success just because of the fact that we put so much more items into it that also must have had power or uh, power one or power two stamina three is still a little bit low but because we put so many items in it has given it a 69 percent chance and then even when we end up putting in the extra slot you can see that the values get a lot like they take a lot less of a hit on them because the items that we're putting into it are much more powerful and there's just so much more items in general okay so that's how you end up adding abilities now for the old type weapons which is unlocking potential and grinding old type attributes that's pretty much going to end up being the same thing but you don't really have to worry about this old type weapons are literally f referring to weapons that were in an older version of the game that you rarely end up getting now i don't even think you ever get them now you can probably still get old type weapons from some very specific means but generally speaking old type weapons are going to end up being pretty useless so you don't really need to worry about that unlocking potential i'm pretty sure is just the same as when we unlock the potential uh, passive ability through the grinding method at levels 10 20 and 30 anyways now the s class special ability transfer this is where things get wholly complicated so as soon as we end up going to our crazy 14 star whatever weapon right uh there's going to be certain abilities that will count as an s tier weapon uh, or certain ab abilities that will only be on s tier weapons which uh, s tier as far as i know is as soon as you get to these rainbow stars i'm not sure which one of these abilities it considers to be an s rank ability but if we go to page two there's going to be these icons right here that show supported now what these mean is that we can actually upgrade whatever that s tier ability is from plus two to three to like you can make it like way more powerful and what's basically going to happen is depending on what the s class ability is uh it's going to end up making the weapon do more damage with certain photon arts uh it might even change some of the attacks to end up being a little bit different it's really really cool stuff but it's something that i've only just barely scratched the surface on so i don't want to get too too into it just because i don't want to end up talking as if i know what i'm talking about uh, just as far as i've read in the tutorials and stuff like that it's something that becomes way more important later on as you end up getting some of these higher tiered abilities right 
or higher tiered weapons. So I'm not sure if uh, Vinculum is the S tier ability, or maybe the S tier ability of this weapon would be once I end up getting it to plus 10, and then I unlock its potential, maybe then I could transfer that thing's potential to another of uh, another S tier weapon. I'm not entirely sure, okay? Uh, and then there's changing weapons forms. I think that's literally changing the looks of a weapon more so than a cosmetic. Uh, as far as I know, because when we try to go into here, it literally says base weapons are required to be at their maximum grind level and material items must be either weapons that are also grinded to their max level or weapon camos. So I think that this is just literally changing the looks of a weapon, but to a more permanent degree, maybe. And then there's a uh, unit skill additions. So this has to be at uh, 12 starred items. Uh, this is just for your armor. The unit is like your armor abilities, right? Uh, you can change the potential on certain items as well, but good luck with that. And then change the photon color, which I think is quite literally just, I don't know if photon color is something that comes into the game later on, or if it's just a cosmetic thing. I'm sorry, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, owner registration is sometimes you'll get like an item that is like stuck to your character. I'm pretty sure getting rid of the owner registration is so that you could trade it with other players, if I'm not mistaken. But there is a couple uh, tips that you can end up reading through in here, but we won't deal with that today. Okay, so last but not least, we're going to talk about where you can end up buying some of these items that are required for upgrades. So if we actually just go right up here on the staircase, all the way at the end, there's going to end up being the Photon Drop Ascendant, uh, and this person will literally end up trading you for Photon Spheres and Crystals and stuff. Uh, it's a bit overwhelming and expensive because you can see that Photon Drops are Bronze, Photon Crystals are Silver, Photon Spheres are Gold. So we have to have 10 Bronze in order to get one Photon Crystal, and then we have to have 10 Photon Crystals or 10 Silver in order to end up getting one Photon Sphere, uh, and which is going to end up giving us one to our Gold because the Photon Spheres gold and then you would have to spend uh even more of those five of them in order to end up getting the photon booster which is something that is required for some of the much much higher tiered items right so then there's also the grind risk reduction as i mentioned earlier that's quite literally so that you have more of a success of it actually it actually grinding right and then on top of that sometimes sometimes the treasurer lady in the hub area uh, her shop is actually on a rotation but as of right now just as a quick example she does actually have a uh, where is it where is it she does actually have, oh, she did actually have a Lamba grinder, which is required to grind uh, some of the higher tiered weapons. Uh, her shop is on a rotation though. As you can see, it shows the date that it's going to end up changing. So the treasure is still over there, but we're all the way at the back of the room so that we can end up selecting the other floors and going straight to the casino. In the casino, this shop, uh, I'm not 100% sure about this, just because the way that it's explained or translated is kind of confusing, but right over here is the prize counter attendant, uh, and you're going to end up buying these items for the casino coins, so you're going to have to get involved with the casino in order to end up getting these resources, but you can see that this guy actually sells grind success rate items, uh, he also ends up selling lambda grinder grinders, which again, you can get from the harder difficulties in the game as a red drop, uh, you can also end up getting the as uh, rare crest rewards and stuff like that or you can just buy it from this guy as far as I can tell this is a limited shop meaning that he has a limited quantity and it's going to end up restocking on the date that you end up seeing up here maybe it's just that it just ends up resetting the entire stock and changing it to other things but as far as I know this guy is a limited amount of items that he can sell, whereas the treasurer is the one that quite literally will uh, only sell certain items per week. Just uh, It just ends up changing out. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I hope that helped you out. I did the best of my ability to end up making things as instructive as possible. There are still certain things that I'll admit that I don't fully understand uh, about how all the grinding works and stuff like that, but that's just because I don't really have that much experience with the end game grinding, but this should end up being a good enough tutorial for you guys to dip your feet into it and understand it so that you can end up starting to mess with it. And if there's anything important that I left out, you can always leave that in the comments. Otherwise, have yourselves a great day. And if you found this video helpful, I would appreciate if you'd smash like. You can always sub for more because we're going to be playing more PSO on the channel for sure. And if you want to go that extra mile of support, 
supporting me. You can either hit join, get yourself a couple perks on the YouTube channel, or just buy some of the merch. Dinorm, stay up with gamers.